Amen. Well, y'all sound good this morning. Y'all sound real good this morning. What an honor and a blessing as always to first and foremost be in the house of God this morning to be able to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. I first and foremost also want to thank the, the brothers for the praying the singing and the conducting of the services thus far, uh, it has been enjoying, and we pray that uh, the remainder will be edifying to each and every one of you here, uh, that we may grow, Amen. and continue to be encouraged, and to continue to be inspired, amen? Yes, sir. Welcome, each and every one of you, for those who may be visiting with us for the first time, or haven't been here, and back again, uh, you are honored, yes, amen, and glad that you chose today to come and worship with us and spend time with us. Mm -hmm. We truly appreciate it. And if there's anything that we can do for you uh, during this time, please let it be known. Raise your hand. The brothers will be more than happy uh, to help and assist you. I thank Brother Jimmy uh, for the reading of the scripture this morning. If you all have your Bibles available, let us turn to Matthew, the 18th chapter. Matthew, the 18th chapter, if you will bear with me for two or three minutes. Tops, Matthew 18th chapter. I just want to go through this scripture so we can get a running start and really get the full context of this yes. parable of the unforgiving service. Yes. Servant. Matthew 18, 21 to 35. Let us begin. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Mm -hmm. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he began to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and that the payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will repay you. Then the master of the servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave the debt. But the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him 100 denarii. And he said, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe me. Mm -hmm. So this servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay all that, that I owe you, owe you. And he would not but went and threw him in prison until mm. he should pay the debt. Mm. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were grieved and they came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, mm -hmm. for I have forgiven you all the debt because you begged me. Mm -hmm. Should you not have also had compassion on your fellow servant, just I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. Mm. So my heavenly father also will do to each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Amen. You know, church, this morning, I wanted to tell y'all, talk to y'all a little bit about forgiveness. You know, it's, it's one of the most challenging and complex aspects, uh, you know, of the human experience. You know, I mean, it's it, it's fraught with with, with, with emotion, uh, especially when it comes to forgiving others, mm -hmm. ourselves, family members, mm -hmm. and and you know, difficulties in forgiveness can can be traced. Uh, back to uh, various psychological, emotional, 
and social things. And, and when they're all intertwined together, mm -hmm. it, it creates a barrier for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It creates a barrier for us to get over. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. And it makes it really, really difficult. So the, through the parable of the, of the unforgiving servant this morning, yeah. you know, Jesus teaches us how essential forgiveness is to our relationship with God yes. as well as others. It brings us a sense of freedom. Yeah, yeah. It brings us a sense of freedom. Yeah, yeah. And, and a couple of lessons that I want us to take from the king's forgiveness. I want to talk about a couple of lessons from the king's forgiveness because the first thing is, you know, forgiveness breaks the chain of bondage. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'll say it again. Forgiveness breaks the chain of bondage. Yeah. The yeah. king's forgiveness, it, it, it liberates the servant from, from crushing debt, right? right. And, and God's forgiveness uh, forgives us from the, the burden of guilt and, and shame and sin. Yeah. Yet many of us continue uh, to hold on and, and, and carry guilt mm -hmm. of things that we've done in the past, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we've done way, way, way long time ago, right. Right. that God didn't already forgive us for, but we just still struggle with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and the number two part is forgiveness is rooted in compassion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The king was moved by the servant's plea, mm -hmm. showing that he, his forgiveness, and, and he was gave it to him because he had, he was compassionate. Mm -hmm. Right? He saw how the servant was begging him and pleading with him, please forgive me of this debt. I can't take it. Yeah. And by compassion, the king forgave him of that debt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we're not compassionate, mm -hmm. Right? We're not going to be able to forgive any, anybody. Hmm? Man. You see, number three, what we can learn from, from the king's forgiveness is forgiveness is a reflection mm -hmm. of God's heart. Yeah. Mm. Just as the king forgave an unpayable debt, God forgave us unconditionally. Hmm? Yeah. He forgave us because of his love, not who we are. Yeah. Yeah. We need to emulate and demonstrate that same act of love. Yes. And if you drop down again to the to the scripture reading, uh, 18, 28 to 30, but that servant went out mm -hmm. and found one of his other, other fellow servants. Mm -hmm. Now see that? Mm -hmm. Who owed him a hundred and a half. Yeah. And laid hands on him. Mm -hmm. Took him by the throat. <laughs> Pay me what you owe. Mm -hmm. So the servant fell down. And the servant fell down and, and, and said the same thing that he said to his master. He mm -hmm. begged him. He said, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Mm. And he would not. Mm. But went and threw him in the prison mm. till he should pay. You know, that same dude who asked his master for forgiveness mm, and was granted that day. When, when it came time for him to do the same thing, no, I wouldn't do it. Mm. Do, 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 do we get like that sometimes? Mm -hmm. I mean, are there some things that we went over the top on? Mm. And, and, and that person forgave us? Mm -hmm. Right? And then not long after that, you know, somebody offended us, maybe not even to that same degree. Mm. Mm? But we want to have hardness of heart. I think, I think Jesus was trying to say something in his parable now. Yeah. I think he's trying to say something because of the way I look at it, mm -hmm. the, the servant, the, the first guy, the unforgiven servant, he owed 10,000 talents. Yeah. At that time, do you know how much 10,000 talents was? That was the equivalent of 200,000 working labor hours, man. Mm -hmm. That's an unforgivable debt. Mm -hmm. There's no way he could ever <laughs> work that off. Huh? Unforgivable. But yet the master forgave him. Mm -hmm. The same servant went up and found out, found one of his homeboys, you know what I'm saying, who owed him, the Bible says what? 100 denarii. Well, at that time, 100 denarii was worth about 100 days of work. Mm -hmm. Maybe three, a little more than three months. And he took him by the throat. Mm -hmm. They had him put in jail. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. You see that? Mm. We down here on earth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. arguing and fussing and holding and grudges and mad and won't, won't forgive one another for things mm -hmm. 
And God, look what he did. He forgave a debt that we could not pay. You see the message here? Yes, sir. Mm. That's me. Jesus sent his son to die on the cross, amen, for sins he didn't commit and that we couldn't pay for. Mm. We got to be mindful of that. Mm? And then you got that old unforgiving servant. Mm -hmm. You know, a couple of points from I get out of, I want to share from the unforgiving servant is, number one, unforgiveness chains us as much as others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In refusing to forgive, the servant is soon in prison himself. When we withhold forgiveness, yeah. we not only imprison the other person, but we imprison ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. With, with, with bitterness, with anger, with resent, with hurt. Mm -hmm. Unforgiveness can be, can be a form of bondage that weighs on our hearts and our minds. And forgiveness is not about fairness. It's not about I'll forgive him when he make it right. I'll forgive him when he apologize. Forgiveness is about freedom of your own uh, mind and heart and getting all that stuff off you. Yes. You, you, can't be, you can't be looking for them, waiting on them, or oh, that's what I'm going to fear. It's not about that. It's not about fairness. Yes. Forgiveness is what doing what God wants us to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Forgiveness re reflects the heart of Christ. Christ willingly went to the cross on our behalf mm -hmm. for a debt we could never repay, like I said. Mm -hmm. When we forgive, we, we, we reflect Christ's sacrificial love and, and we invite his peace into our hearts. You know, and you say, well, well, Brother Matthews, listen, man. Hey, bro, you don't know what I done been through, man. Yeah. Oh, you, you don't know what I done been through. You don't know what she did to me. You don't know what he did to me. You don't know what they did to me. My own kid. You don't know that, bro. You don't know that workplace is hard to treat. You don't know. Mm. And you're right. I don't know. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know where you've been. I don't know what the pain and the suffering. But you know what? I know a God that knew you before you were for me to the mom's fool. Amen. And if anybody knows you, it's that omnipotent God. Amen. That all, that all powerful God. That omnipresent God. That's been all over the place. That omniscient God. That same God that knows everything about you when we go born. Yeah. He know. That same God that put your body together and gave you this brain and this mind and gave you these feelings to begin with that you want to get into, he can free you from it. Yes. If you trust him. Yes. Amen? Amen? That's why Jesus told him. Yeah. Matthew 11, 29 and 30. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle, he said, and lowly at heart, and you will find rest for your soul. That's Jesus talking. Mm -hmm. For my yoke is easy, my word is light. Bring that to him, man. Yeah. He didn't just say it to be saying it. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart, leave not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. And all your ways is all saying that he will direct your paths. Yes. We got to trust him. Man. You know, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord, for those who are called according to his purpose. Not good things, not bad things. All things will work together for the good of those of the Lord. Amen. But called according to his purpose. Sometimes we want to be called to our own purpose. Right? We want to be called to our own purpose. And we, we wonder why things ain't working out for us. Mm -hmm. Forgiving ourselves is difficult. It really is. And the guilt that comes with that is is very, very tough. Yeah, yeah. You know, but things that we can do to help us forgive ourselves is first we got to accept God's forgiveness. <laughs> yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Forgive ourselves. Like, if there's something that's deep down in our hearts that we know we did, and no matter what, we just can't shake it because of the guilt, yeah. first thing we got to do is accept God's forgiveness. Yeah. Okay? Because when God forgives, He wipes our sins away. Yeah. Yeah. We must accept His forgiveness as final and, and no. Let go of self-condemnation. Mm. Mm? Mm. We've all done some bad things. Mm? But a lot of us can't get to that next level because we hung up on what we did. Yeah. Mm. Even though we went down to that watery grave of baptism and came up a new creature in Christ and we're doing this, that, and third and all the things that we're supposed to be doing, there are some things that are blocking us from getting to that next level because we haven't dealt with it. Yes. Mm? 
Trusting God's redemptive power. Romans 8, 1 tells us, reminds us that there's no condemnation mm -hmm, for those who are in Christ Jesus. Believing in God's redemptive power allows you to walk in freedom and purpose rather than shame. They won't talk about you, let them talk about you. You worry about it. They'll go ahead and run them off. They won't, you won't walk in the room and, and, and they won't whisper and chat. Let it go on, let it happen. God's going to take care of you. Right? Don't worry about what they're saying. Don't worry about what you did, because what you did, God forgave you. Yes. And it's done. Fine. Yes. But it don't make no sense for you worrying all about it or worrying about what they're saying. You just keep your eyes on Jesus. Yes. Amen? Yes. You keep your eyes on Jesus. Same way Peter did. We know what happened to Peter when he took his eyes off, right? 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 All right then. Let go of the past to embrace the future. Philippians 3, 13, 14, we know that encourages us to to forget what is behind us and press on towards what is ahead. Our mistakes don't define us, man. They don't define us. Right, right. There's a reason why, you know, the windshield is bigger than that rear view mirror. We got to focus uh -huh. on what's ahead of us. Yes. Amen. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, you say, it's hard to forgive, to accept forgiveness. We know that. And first thing we got to do is pray for those who hurt us. Jesus teaches us to pray for our enemies in 544. That's scripture. We know that. I'm keeping real child. Keep real child. Right up here this morning. It's hard to pray for somebody that's jacking you up. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. Come on. It's hard. They, they, they're working you over. They do you dirty, you do you wrong, the Bible says, pray, but you got to do it. Amen. It ain't easy. It's hard. Amen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In the front and the back, it's not his. But it's hard. But the Bible says, you know, we have to forgive. Prayer softens our hearts. That's what happens. We start talking about God, and we're honest about those things that hurt us. First of all, we got to be honest with that. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and a lot of times, we, 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 we come to God with, we come to God, all of a sudden we come to people. We come to God and we don't want to know everything. We just hate or we don't know. Well, you got to really tell God what's really going on. He knows. He just wants to tell him. Yes, sir. Sam hurt God. Yes, sir. He hurt me. I didn't ever expect it. God, you did me wrong. And I'm struggling with this right now, man. you got to be honest with me and let it go. Hmm? Choose to release even when it's hard. Forgiveness may be a, a daily decision. Amen? A daily decision. Every time you think about it, or what he did or she did or they did, forgive him. Yeah. Pray on it. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Allow God to, to heal your wounds. Forgiveness doesn't mean minimize the pain. Right, right. Pain will go, hey, 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 let me tell you something. Ain't no shortcuts to it. Right. Ain't get that pain, ain't no shortcuts to no pain. Right. Only way you won't get you by the fall. All roles go for Christ Jesus and God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't do it on your own. Yeah. Don't be proud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if there's anybody in the world that we can just let it go and be humble and just tell all our worries and care, it's God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hey. Tell him. He knows. Yes, he, knows. he just wants you to be humble. Mm -hmm. Bitterness. Bitterness. You know, if we don't allow God to check our bitterness, right? If we don't surrender and open up to God and allow God to check our bitterness, mm -hmm. it will take on another form of its own. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear me? It will take on another form of its own to the point where you will have no rest. Mm -hmm. And, and that is, it, it's no longer about you being bitter to the, the people that offended you. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're bitter towards people even getting up to you. Mm -hmm. You just walk around all the time mad yeah. and angry. Hey, Amen. You can't trust nobody. Amen. There's no peace. There are walls going up here, walls going up there. You just all of a sudden just isolate yourself. Mm -hmm. That's not healthy. That's not good. Amen. Hmm? And then you start taking it out on your, your friends and your family, amen, and, and your co-workers, amen. You're just mad and angry, amen, because you got some unresolved issues all up in your heart, amen, that only the Lord can save you and help you with, amen. But if you don't release that and let it go, you're going to be like that. Hmm? Hmm? Not only that, but 
we look at all this chaos. Amen, brother. So true, bro. Right, right. We got all this chaos. How are we going to reach out? Mm. How are we going to evangelize? Mm. How are we going to encourage? Amen. Mm. We all twisted up in bitterness and things that don't happen from us from way back without it being resolved. We are separated from God. Mm. Ephesians 4, 31, 32 says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you. With all malice, the Bible says, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Yeah. Mm. Why do we not want to forgive? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are some of the reasons? Maybe it's just the, the pain that you were wrong was just so hurtful, so powerful, mm -hmm. that all you really want to do is that get back. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you can't even think of all the forgiveness because mm -hmm. the natural retaliation kicks in, right? right. Uh, yeah, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> you ain't even thinking about the forgiveness piece. Right, right. Hmm? The other part is the complexity of of, of family dynamics. Mm -hmm. Man, when someone in your family hurts you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That run to be. Especially when they y'all come up together, y'all got history. Mm -hmm. Maybe that person was just always, you and that person was just always that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's a case where you was always looking up for that family member. Maybe it's something your mom and your dad did, but the family dynamics when it hurts you, it's pain. It's hard to overcome that. We talked about it's hard to forgive ourselves. There's also a fear of, well, if I forgive me, they're only going to do trying to do the end. All those things weigh into that. You know, a lot of us were taught when we were learning how to forgive, it's not how to properly forgive, right? What you retaliate, get, get back, the whole grudges. If somebody do you wrong, just let them go, turn them loose. Mm -hmm. But that's not, that's not how God wants us to live. Mm -hmm. Matthew 6, 14 and 15, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Yeah. That's key. But if ye, if ye forgive not men in their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Mm -hmm. Colossians 3.13 tells us, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against you, another, even as Christ forgave you, you also do ye. The world teaches us these things about the get back and, and, mm -hmm. and that forgiveness is weak. Amen. Mm -hmm. Don't trust anybody. Everybody got anger. Everybody coming at you. That's that, that's that worldly mentality. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell y'all, man, until we learn to forgive, we will we will have some barriers. Hmm? Until we learn to forgive, we will be we will be bitter. Yes. Until we learn to forgive, we will we will be full of wrath. Mm. In turn, until we learn to forgive, we will be angry all the time. Mm. Until you learn to forgive, we will always be speaking bad about somebody. Amen. Yeah. A lack of forgiveness is a blessing blocker. Mm. You know, I hear that? It's a blessing blocker. A lack of forgiveness is is a physical health hazard. Messing with your body. Mm -hmm. Get you sick. A lack of forgiveness is a spiritual health hazard. Yeah, yeah. A lack of forgiveness is a mental health hazard. A lack of forgiveness is a stronghold that will never let you be free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lack of forgiveness is a prayer blocker. Amen. Mm -hmm. A lack of forgiveness puts distance, amen, between you and God. Mm -hmm. It causes turmoil in our hearts. It tears us apart families. Friendship. Relationships. Mm -hmm. it, it disrupts the fellowship in the church. Mm -hmm. Amen. It gives us the difficult. You know, know that. And then as I'm, I'm about to close, close, I want to just drop about five, five things in here. How, how forgiveness can really, really can get hacked with the relationships and standing with God. That's really what it's all about. Yes, uh, all, all these things that we, all these little feelings we get all up into, that yeah, yeah, yeah. seem so significant. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's just what the word is saying, what God is saying, God 
God wants forgiveness. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. It's a free area in God's, God's presence. presence. You know, in Matthew, Matthew 6, 14, 15, I always said, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others of their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. This shows that heart, unwilling to forgive, can hinder your ability to receive God's forgiveness yeah. and experience His grace. Mm -hmm. Number two, it impacts our prayer life. Mm -hmm. Mark 11, 25 reminds us that when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your, your Father in Heaven will forgive you. Holding grudges or resentment can lead to distraction, guilt, and even hypocrisy as we approach God with unresolved bitterness. Mm -hmm. We are praying congregation. We are praying people. Yes. Right? Yep. If there's somebody that's in need in prayer, mm -hmm. right, and we go on to God with a whole bunch of stuff on our heart that's not resolved, yeah. Yeah. we run the risk of it falling on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we wonder why you know, things don't turn out the way we are. Maybe we, in our minds certain prayers didn't happen. At the end of the day, it's the will of God. But I'm telling you, we got to have to make sure our conscience is clean to the best of our ability. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. When we are willing to forgive, we approach God with sincerity mm -hmm. and openness, and it enriches our prayer life. It also hinders our salvation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Impacts our soul. But, you know, a lack of peace affects our ability to live fully in the spirit. It can make it difficult to reflect God's love to others. Over time, unforgiveness can be a spiritual burden, mm -hmm. harming us far more than it affects the person mm -hmm. we refuse to forgive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as witnesses, we yeah. are to make sure that we are showing the world how to be Christians. Yeah, man. And if the world sees us walking around with grudges, mm -hmm. And resentment. Uh, yeah. They're already looking at us now. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 that, this is what they do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, from, from time. Yeah. God's people are always going to be watched and judged. Yeah. Right? They, 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 we, if we're going to give them something to talk about, let it be good. Yeah. Right? And, and you know, that, that unforgiving heart, they're going to see that, right? Mm -hmm. So as I close, you know, unforgiveness impacts our relationship with God. Yeah. By creating a barrier. Right? It limits our openness of prayer and it can hinder our spiritual growth. And, and, and when we learn to forgive, you know, we, we reflect God's love, right? Yeah. Uh, deepen our intimacy with Him, right? Yeah. And it's hard. Right. It really is. You know? Right. We all we all struggle with it, but we have to remember it's what God asks us to do. And if we don't start to practice it and learn how to deal with it yes. and let God help us with it, mm -hmm. it's only going to hinder us. Mm -hmm. yes. It's going to hinder us, right? Yes. As Jimmy was saying, we might have some gay trouble. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. And, and we just, we don't want to do that. Yeah. Right? And we just, you know. So in conclusion, the parable of the unforgiving servant, you know, reveals the bondage we experience without forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Because that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. The servant who was who was forgiven a huge debt but failed to give the smaller amount that mm -hmm. his, his fellow worker had, yeah. you know, was, was the wrong thing to do, was the wrong attitude. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we just have to remember that, you know, we got to embrace forgiveness to its fullest form, Amen. you know what I mean? And, and we really have to make sure that we check ourselves. As we are Christians, we always have to check ourselves, right? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and examine ourselves yeah. to see where our yeah. areas of weakness Right? And where we're born. Right? Because I tell you, you know, from the day you were born, you know, God was there. Yes, sir. But so was Satan. Yes, sir. So all your little ups and downs and trials and tribulations and all the little mistakes you made, guess who was taking notes? Mm. Mm. Y'all ain't think about that, do you? Yeah. Huh? So, then, so you, you wonder why there's certain areas of your life you just continue to struggle with? Huh? But Satan knows it. God knows too, but Satan knows we ain't listening, we ain't paying attention. We just keep falling for the same old trick. Yeah, yeah. He keeps pushing that same doggone button every time. Mm. Oh, Massey, or Brother Matthew, whoever it is, oh, yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I. Say, God, yeah, I know how to get it. Yeah. I know how to get it. Yeah. 
Bingo. It's that button, right? right? And we all got it. Amen. Right? Amen. 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 Church, the, the message is yours. Um, I hope that it was edifying and encouraging uh, to both the believer and non-believer. Amen. Amen. If you are here today and you know there's you've been struggling. Um, this is as good as time as ever. Amen. Uh, to ask for prayer to get back on track. Mm -hmm. Um, if you do not know Jesus the Christ for by the pardoning of your sins, uh, we encourage you. You know what I mean? The Bible tells us that we got to hear the word of God, amen, amen. that was preached. We got to be able to hear it in Matthew 17, 5. It tells us we got to believe it, yeah. amen, in Mark 1, 15. And, and then we also have to make sure that we're willing to repent. If you've never been a, a Christian before, say we've got to repent, we've got to change your ways, amen. Yes. Uh, you know, and that's hard. Right? And it's not an overnight thing. It's a growth thing. Amen. Yeah. But as long as you are willing <clears throat> to try, mm -hmm. <clears throat> amen, and make that effort, mm -hmm. amen, God yeah. got you. And we also want to be able to confess that Jesus the Christ is the Son of God. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Confess. When you think about it, right? All the stuff in this world that we confess, huh? that we're proud of, huh? think of all the things in this world that we're proud of, we boast of. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we be proud of our jobs, proud of our families, proud of our houses, proud of our accomplishments, proud of our children. Well, we tell the whole world. Uh -huh. But we need to tell the world that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We have yeah. to confess that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And then be, be willing to go down into that watery grave of baptism. Mark 16, 16, and come up a new creature in Christ. And it's not easy. It's not easy, right? But you have to be committed, yes. right? God went through a whole mm -hmm. lot of things to make sure that not only would we be washed of our sins, but we would have an opportunity to be with him if we were in being. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen? And I just yeah. want to encourage y'all today, wherever you are in your walk, mm -hmm. wherever it is that you're struggling with, yes. give it to Jesus, bring it to his feet, and leave it there. Yes. Go back and pick it up. Yes, sir. Leave it there and trust him and allow him to work in your life. Amen? Amen. 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 Brother Massey is going to be coming to bring forth a song. Song number uh, uh, 853. 853. When you all get to heaven. When you all get to heaven. If you will stand with me. Sing the woman dress.